Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin back in Tucson, Arizona after a good time in Long Beach, California, SoCal, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the week that's coming up because it's going to be a little bit different, and uh, we're going to talk about just some some good times coin collecting and, uh, and otherwise. So uh, this week, Long Beach was uh, really nice to meet a bunch of people down there. Uh, as always, it's a fun show, even though the summer show is the slow show because it's busier at other shows. Just everybody, welcome to summer. Let's go have a good time, relax a little bit, enjoy. People get uptight about the fact that the Long Beach Expo show is, you know, coined, but then there's a whole bunch of sports cards and stuff. But I just like being able to see other collectibles. So when I go to a show and it's all coins, that's, I mean, I like coins, obviously, and paper money and all the ephemera that goes along with it. You know, here you can see I've got my newspaper clipping here and all kinds of stuff that's fun also uh, i don't even really follow sports much at all uh, some of you who've been around a while know i, I just follow the U of A women's basketball team and that's about it but like you know who doesn't get excited when you see the babe ruth's jersey that uh is the one he that called the shot in? and they're estimating this look at what they're estimating this to go for did you see that number that's this number here that's that whoop the wrong side 30 million plus, that, friends, is a walk-off. Talk about that, 30 million plus, my goodness. Uh, anyway, I think it's fun to have some other collectibles in the same area if you've got space for it, which they do. So, uh, God willing, we'll have some new purchases to show to you and also hopefully maybe a little extra special content from the week. Speaking of special content, what else is going on this week is something that is uh, now... For something completely different. I'm going to the Baltimore show, the Whitman Expo Baltimore show this week, June 13, 14, and 15. That's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Baltimore at the uh, at the Baltimore Convention Center. Uh, it's at the Inner Harbor area for those of you who are familiar with the area a little bit and maybe haven't been there. Uh, and I am going not as a coin dealer, but as a uh, coin reporter, basically. And I'm very excited to do my best Ted Koppel or maybe Geraldo Rivera, or maybe Ron Burgundy. And uh, if you think I should wear the uh, plum or purple, what color would you say his Ron Burgundy uh, suit is? Anyways, if you want me to wear one of those, just go ahead and hit the thumbs up right now. That, that'd be great. So I'm pretty excited to be there. The show is uh, on Thursday, uh, 12 to 6, and then it is, I think what do we got there, 10 to 6 on Friday, 10 to 5 on Saturday. Uh, I will actually be set up in an area doing live interviews for part of the show. I'll be filming some other interviews. We will be filming some content on the floor and looking around just at what's going on down there. And so we will have some of that both on, uh, of course, our YouTube channel here at The Coin Geek, also on Instagram at The Coin Geek and at Old Pueblo Coin. We will try to double dip and post on both of those for y'all. And uh, we're going to have some fun with it. And uh, I look forward to meeting a bunch of you out there. This is my first time to the East Coast. Uh, I have never been I'm trying to think of how far how far east I have been. So, uh, you know, my geography people are about to get really upset with me here because, you know, there's Dallas, Texas, there's Schaumburg, Illinois, and then there's some places up in Wisconsin, which I can't quite recall. So you guys can tell me which the farthest farthest east of all those would happen to be. So anyways, I am very excited to uh, to spend some time in Baltimore and to cover a show, not as a dealer, but just doing what I do here, which I enjoy doing. So having said that, let's talk a little bit about just some coin collecting stuff in general. Like I mentioned, most of us are collectors at heart of something and probably of more than just coins. So that was why I kind of let off with that little bit of a the shot that uh, Babe Ruth wore his jersey. Uh, so many fun collectibles that are out there and there's so many fun ways to collect and there's not just one right way to collect and that's one of the things that I just want to mention that people kind of bring at me all the time. Uh, I was thinking about this because one of the comments that I got was uh, from uh, Gavin here, unpopular opinion but I prefer raw coins but all these are beautiful. Uh, unpopular, so unpopular not in the negative way I don't think. I don't think people are going to be like, that guy collects. He collects raw coins. Ooh. Not okay. Not okay. Um, unpopular as in not as many people collect raw coins as graded coins. And this is something that has changed in my lifetime. And as you can all tell, I'm extremely young. So therefore, that's a short window of time that it's all changed in. But when I started doing coins, the majority of collectors 
would buy a raw coin over a gridded coin, or at a minimum, they, it was a 50-50 split. So in other words, they would say, I'll buy raw or I'll buy graded if it's graded. They didn't care because they were going to crack it out anyway. They weren't going to crack it out because they were going to flip it or dip it or try to you know upgrade it. They cracked it out because it was going into an album. That's how the collector market was 25 years ago. And, uh, you know, more and more people started to move closer and closer to where we are today, where it is mostly graded coins. And uh, my favorite thing about collecting things is there's not just one right way to do it. And so uh, you can go ahead and buy all the graded coins you want, or you can have zero graded coins in your collection. And both ways are just fine. Uh, you can buy yourself a $30 million plus you know, Jersey, if you've got the money for it, you know, what else are you going to do if you're Bill Gates, right? Uh, you know, that, I'm just thinking about how many people are going to fight for a $30 million Jersey. I'm, I'm assuming most of these are like sports tycoons. I, you would think, you know, there's only so many guys out there that you could actually call a tycoon nowadays. So don't feel like you have to buy coins a certain way based on what someone else tells you enjoy the coin hobby and coin collecting and this leads into the second question which really all these things tie back together with just the philosophy of collecting and, and what do we do and why do we do it uh peter has a uh, i'm going to basically take his question and kind of summarize it here a little bit you know asking about would you rather have something with like crazy historical wow factor you know like babe ruth's home run shot jersey or maybe something that is going to be uh, very rare by grade or condition. And so, once again, no wrong way to do this. If you, if you like the $30 million jersey, go buy it. But really, I've always enjoyed rarity over grade rarity. And so, 25 years ago, like I said, the, the grading, uh, the number of collectors who are buying slab certified graded coins, whatever you want to call it, were was a lot fewer than it is today and so people didn't care as much about having an ms68 you know 1958 penny or whatever it might be right and so that market's a little bit relatively new on the stage overall and uh, one of the things that i like to think about is that you don't really have to pick and choose and this all goes back to whatever your budget is right so um i'm really fond of still i'm very fond of some of the stuff from the you know 40s and 50s that's very affordable you can buy it raw and it can be stunning and so usually i'm thinking of your franklin halves and your roosevelt dimes and and your you know washington quarters all the circulating coinage of the time and each of those is very fun in its own way because you can buy it raw or certified but also buying it raw is fun because there, a lot of those coins are coins that at a certain price point you know at a certain grade point people really aren't trying to gouge you on the price. In other words, it's a nice choice uncirculated coin, but if the seller really thinks it's going to be like top pop, they'll probably get it certified. But most guys aren't going to look that closely at 1940s and 50s vintage coins. You know, most dealers are just going to look at that coin like I've seen a thousand of these and I don't care. Oh, this one's kind of pretty. Instead of being $15, I'll mark it at 25. Well, there's plenty of coins that you can go out into the open marketplace and find raw at your local coin shop or coin show or coin club that are just gem coins. And so when you're looking at coins that uh, you've seen a thousand of and one just catches your eye, buy it. You know, buy it because you love it, because you enjoy the coin. And, and it doesn't matter that it's not, you know, certified. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about it. You just buy the coin because it's beautiful, right? Uh, so. When it comes to rarity versus grade, uh, you, there's not a necessarily either or, it's both and, right? So you can, you can have something that's really expensive and rare that the rest of the populace is dying to have, and you can have some really inexpensive things. Uh, some of, some of um, coin dealers that I grew up with when we've talked about this have pointed out, you know, they don't really want choice on circulated coins. They want a nice, clean, extra fine. But they just want something that's got a really original look to it. And that's what they're out looking for for themselves. And these are guys that can afford $10,000 coins, but they might choose, you know, the $500 or less, maybe even $100 coin in their price range, right? And so, and for someone who doesn't have a lot of money to spend, 
you can buy beautiful, beautiful coins from the last century for less than $40 uh, and enjoy it and really have something that you love and cherish. And you can actually show to people. And if they're collectors that have been collecting a long time, they will be able to look at that and be like, wow, that's really cool. That's a neat looking dime. Where do you know that type of thing? So not one right way to collect coins, guys, and uh, not one right way to collect anything. And we'll see uh, kind of where all these collector markets lead. All I know is that, you know, my mission is to make sure that we have fun collecting. We have a future generation of collectors. And uh, thanks for being a part of that. And thanks for encouraging other people. Uh, if you haven't noticed yet, this is a channel you can send people to to learn more about coins and coin collecting. And as always, have a great week, guys. Enjoy summertime. Hopefully you're out of school already. If not, I'm sorry. And uh, I hope to see some of you in Baltimore. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.